Hey everybody, Tom Barnish, Chicago scene in the West Town neighborhood going back to school. I love these old buildings. I'm here at the Chicago Academy for the Arts to check out their first judge exhibition they've had since the pandemic started. It's an important process for these students to get their work out there and get critiqued and see what they can do going forward with their careers. I'm going to talk to three students and a couple faculty about what this place is and what makes it so special now for the Chicago scene. Let's go, let's go to school. All right, I'm inside the winter juried exhibition here at the Chicago Academy for the Arts and I'm here with Jason. Jason, how are you, sir? Hi there. Welcome to our school. Yes, uh, for people who don't know, why don't you give me the rundown of what this school is and what it means to the city of Chicago and its kids. The Chicago Academy for the Arts is an independent arts oriented high school. Mm -hmm. We're about 130 students who each one of them has three to five hours of immersive pre-professional pre arts training every day. Wow. Visual arts, dance, music, media arts, theater, and musical theater. And in, in addition to that, students have a whole battery of rigorous academic classes every morning. We call that a co-curricular model. About two thirds of our students go off into the arts as a profession once they graduate. But because of their training, a full third of them do non-arts things. They become engineers or business people or attorneys or doctors and whatnot. It sounds like a real fun place to be for kids, especially when they want to pursue the arts of any kind. Um, and this, I, I feel like a lot of these kids might come back home and say, I found my people, right? Oh, that's absolutely <laughs> true. And as faculty and staff, we feel that way too. We both wish we had gone here at, for high school, uh -huh. and we also never want to leave because you're right, it's our people. And you have the Winter Gallery, and this is the first judged uh, gallery post-pandemic, which I'm sure that you and the faculty and the kids here are all excited about, right? Zoom is great, and there's a lot of really cool things we can do on it, but there's nothing like having an exhibition in person with the artwork right here on the walls with the students able to talk about it. And speaking of, I think I'm going to talk to Margie. Thank you, Jason, very much. Margie, how are you? You are in charge of this whole uh, side of things. Uh, why don't you just... Give me the rundown of what you do for the school and tell me about the exhibition here. All right. um, thank you for coming. Uh, I'm the chair of the visual arts department. So this exhibition is something we do every year. We couldn't do it last year. It's the culmination of our first semester. Students work towards this all semester. It's work from class. It's work they do on their own. And most importantly, it's judged or it's, the work is selected by two outside jurors, usually artists and critics or uh, museum people from the Chicagoland area and they pick the work and so students have that professional experience of submitting work to a jury and then sort of the, the joy and sometimes the, the letdown of, of some certain pieces not being selected but then ultimately we all work together to install the show and it's really a celebration of their work, um, their talents and yeah. So how many kids are in this exhibition? 33. 33, 33 students, kids. Yeah, freshmen through seniors. And so. is there a specific thing that you uh, ask them to focus on for the inspiration, or is it just uh, just what they come up with? It's, wor it's work from our classes, and then it's also, you know, they're artists. They're working outside of classes. A lot of the work from our classes is very independently based, so they do have, you know, the ability to pursue their own, their own vision um, in the works they submit here. But, um, yeah, it's a reflection of our classes and then of the students individually. Fantastic. So we got three students here. Hi guys, how are you? They look very, <laughs> they're super excited to talk to the weirdo guy with the camera and the microphone, but here I am anyway. Uh, who do I have here? Uh, I'm Maya Riley, I'm a junior. And Maya, what is, tell me about your piece and what drew the inspiration from it. Oh uh, yeah, so I have three pieces. Two of them are sculptures. The first sculpture is a piece of cranes. Um, it sort of like talks about like my anxiety and how um, like cranes sort of like represent like anxiety and like how how I like relieve my anxiety through like folding paper. And then my second piece is of these little molded um, plaster toys mm -hmm. that I put on the wall and it sort of like shows like the decomposition of like a child or like or just a human just like thinking. And then the last one is a abstracted sort of just like big drawing. So is it a big deal for you to use your artwork to help you deal with anxiety? I know my own daughter does the same exact thing where she uses artwork and those little uh, those little things where you fl flip the thing inside and out, those little, I forgot what they're called, the flip it's, I think it's what it's called, but uh, however you use it, it's important to you that art is the way that you express it. 
Yeah, I usually am not really like a very like expressive person. So I think that like art definitely like shows my expressive shine and like shows my like emotions. And what do you want to do when you're done with school? Um, I'm hoping to do something in the arts, um, either like just being an artist in general or something like being like a curator in a museum. Well, fantastic. Thank you and best of luck. I appreciate talking with you. Who do I have here, sir? I'm Dallas Birkenbuehl. I'm a sophomore. So Dallas, tell me about your piece uh, or pieces and uh, what was the inspiration? Well, I recently have been experimenting with contrasting environment and seeing how my piece can interact with its surrounding environment. Mm -hmm. So I tried adjusting the shape of an object by making checkered uh, patterns on it. Mm -hmm. And then I had my second piece that I got in, it was also a sculpture, and it's a trees with very vibrant colors on them that uh, contrast against the white tone of the wall. Is that anything to do with just living in an urban area where there's a lot of concrete and cement and then you have either beautiful tree-lined streets or, or, or anything in that in general uh, popping off the concrete? I mean, honestly, I don't think so. I think it's just mostly me seeing what, like, what I could do with what I was presented with because I I'm see. not usually into like the sculpture but kind of just visual arts, so it was like a new experience for me. So what do you want to do when you're done here at the school? I don't know. I don't think I've been exposed to enough. Things. What do you want to be exposed to? I guess maybe that's a better question. Honestly, huh? anything. Like, <laughs> I'm open to anything, you know? Well, fantastic. I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you very much, sir. And who do I have here? How are you? Uh, I'm Dee Dee. Um, Hi, Dee Dee. Dee Dee and I'm a senior. Um, well, no pressure. Senior, the whole thing, right? Uh, this is your... <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about your piece, Dee Dee. So I have three pieces. One of them is a painting, and I have two textile works that are based in weaving. Um, so my approach is very experimental. It's very based in um, playing with material and seeing what happens. Um, and I've been thinking a lot about, you know, landscape and different ways to evoke landscape that are both um, draw from like tradition and art history and painting, but also are very mo are much more experimental and uh, atmospheric in many ways. Um, so that's that's what I'm interested in. And so, it, and that's what your pieces represent here in the exhibition? Um, yes, yeah. And so when you're done with school and you go off to college and beyond that, what do you want to do? No pressure um, again. You know, I mean, <laughs> just like keep making art. That's like the only thing I really care about and just, you know, I don't really know. I, I mean, art. Art is the yeah. big factor for sure, right? Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you very much, all three of you. I appreciate it. Margie, thank you very much for explaining. Jason, come over here real quick because uh, tell people again, where, if people who are watching this want their kids to go here or if there are kids watching who want to come here, what's the best way for them to do that? Well, we have students from all over Chicagoland, not just the city itself, but from the near suburbs, the far suburbs, and students commuting literally every day from Wisconsin, Indiana, and Michigan. If someone wants to learn more, they should check out our website, chicagoacademyforthearts.org. We have great summer and Saturday programs for students still in middle school, mm -hmm. and applications and auditions for the regular school year are going on right now. We'd love to meet you, so give us a shout, and uh, we'll talk about the process. Well, thank you very much. Again, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. T-B-A-R-N-A-S at WGNTV.com. If you have a suggestion for the Chicago scene, that's T-Barnas at WGNTV.com. We'll see you guys later. Take care.